Hi there, today we'll look at Syngan, learning a generative model from a single natural image by Tamar Rod Shaham, Tali Dekel, and Tomer Mikhaili. So this paper, as it says, it's dealing with learning a generative model from just one image. And this kind of needs to be stressed because most generative model, even if they produce single image samples, they're kind of trained on a large image database beforehand to kind of learn what a, what an image is. But this algorithm really starts out clean slate, right? Algorithm starts out with nothing, and then you give it this one single training image. And from that, it can then generate all of these things, right? Without ever having seen any other images during training. And uh, the second row is simply a second example where you start clean slate, input this image, and then um, produce these. And you can see there's quite a bit of variety in the samples you produce from this image. So basically, the task is, if you're just given one image, learn something about the distribution. And this paper specifically deals with patch distributions at different scales. So this could be learn about, you know, the distribution of this um, grass to to sky here. So uh, learn about um, the individual birds and so on. And then at lower scales, learn about how the border of this grass looks, right. So you can the generative model learns, ah, there's, you know, there's always kind of grass at the bottom in where there's just one image at the largest scale. But then at lower scales, sometimes the border looks as like a sharp corner. And uh, sometimes the border is relatively flat, like here. So it can vary up those things and it can make it can make the border different. As also the birds, it kind of learns how the individual birds look and how they're distributed. And there, therefore, it can change that. You see, there's quite a bit of variety here. You can also change the aspect ratio, and you can actually do much more, uh, much weirder things with it. For example, here are some examples of applications. First, there is paint to image. So these are different tasks here. So the top row is always the training image. This is the single image you give the algorithm. And then you have a row of input. And then this is what the algorithm outputs. So in paint to image, you input a training image. And you input a you can do this in MS paint or something, kind of the, the way you want the, the image to look, right. So what you want the algorithm to do is take the style, you t want it to take the style of this image, and put it into the form of that image. And it will it produces this looks pretty good. In editing, you can tell the algorithm, all right, I want this, um, I want this tower to go lower down, right? I want this house to be more wide. So you'll get an image like this. And you can see there are clear kind of uh, contours here and here that are not nice. And also the house is, uh, you know, pixel stretched and so on. So th this, this algorithm this generative algorithm can produce this image from it, which looks much better here around the borders and kind of fills in missing windows um, to match, of course, the patch statistics that it sees in this top image, right? You always have to think that this, all this algorithm sees is the topmost image to learn from. Harmonization is a task where you have an input image and then you like copy paste some object in it. And what it does is it will kind of adjust the patch statistics of that object to the surrounding image. And super resolution, finally, finally, we get what every single action movie, the just the NSA can do. It's like, ah, here is the security camera footage, zoom in, brrrp, enhance, brrrp. like, <laughs> yeah, so um, I doubt that that, you know, hidden number plates here, pixelish number plates all of a sudden can become readable and identifiable. But still, um, this this is very cool. And lastly, you can do animation uh, from this. As you can guess, I guess it's not a it's not a um, a movie. All right, let's look at how they do all of this kind of stuff. All of this is the same model that can be tasked to do these different things. 
um, through various probing. At its essence, it's this multi scale GAN. And the GAN is trained to have a series of generators and a series of discriminators and you always train them one by one. So first you train the lowest resolution and then you keep it fixed and then train the next resolution and so on until you're at the highest resolution. So in each layer, so at the bottom layer, we simply feed in, we simply feed in noise to a generator of a GAN and the generator g generates an image. All right. Now you take this image and you take a downsampled version of your training image. Remember, you just have one training image. You take a downsampled version of that and you let the discriminator decide which one's real, which one's fake. And you train the generator to fool the discriminator as much as possible. Now, if you were to do this with the entire image, of course, the generator would simply learn to reproduce the original image. Um, so that's no good. Uh, so what you what this paper does more is that the discriminator actually doesn't work on the entire image, but just on patches of the image. Right. And that's, um, that's to so, so that the basically can't memorize the entire image. So the, the discriminator will pick these patches, these overlapping patches, basically, you can imagine it's something like this overlapping patches, and it will try to decide for each one, is this patch real or is this patch fake, right? So the generator produces the entire image, right? This is what the, the generator produces the entire image. But the discriminator can only see the image in patches, in overlapping patches. And that's what makes this paper kind of work. Otherwise, the they would just remember the the single training image, right? Because you only have one training image, you kind of need a some variety. So this is at the lowest scale, right? You remember, you input the noise. And the lowest scale in this example is for example, 25 by 25 pixel, you scale down, you scale down your original image here, also to 25 by 25. And then you let the discriminator decide. So once you've trained this, once you've trained this generator, to make very good 25 by 25 pixel images that in this patch way, fool the discriminator, you keep it fixed. For the next stage, what you want to do is you always want to go through this layer first. So uh, forget this discriminator. Now we've, we've trained this stage, right? Keep this generator fixed, input noise, output, whatever the generator produces, then s take this upscale it, for example, multiply each side by two to 50 by 50 pixels, input this together with some new noise into the next stage generator. And then the same as before, this generator produces an image, you scale down your original image, you scale it down to now 50 by 50 pixels. And you let the discriminator decide again in patches. Now, since the discriminator patches are always the same size, but we scale down the image less and less, the effective patch size of the discriminator becomes much lower. So now this discriminator only sees the image in patches, like so, right. And also the the generated image that comes in here, it also always also sees in these patches, and it, it tries to decide, are these patches from real or from fake images. So you can see that the lowest layer here, this layer is trained to kind of get the coarse grain structure of the of the image, right? So the discriminator will will kind of see very large patches. And it, so the generator must match the kind of large scale structure, these patches won't be very very high resolution because we downscale the image, but they will be large across the image. So the generator must match the coarse, low resolution um, stuff in the image. But as you go up the layers, up and up the layers, your discriminator sees less and less of the picture at once, excuse me, 
it sees less and less of the picture at once. And so th this discriminator here in the topmost layer can only concentrate on very small patches. And therefore this generator will only have to produce um, things that look real at a very, very small scale, right? So uh, in essence, you have this series of generators trained that each one is tasked with basically modeling details at a finer and finer scale until you come to the last final scale. But then each input of the each one is the output of the last one. So basically you take whatever the last one has produced and the last one is really good at doing coarser grain things and you add to it your details of this level. And this will in the end give you a very realistic image that matches at every level of, of resolution, matches the kind of statistics, the patch statistics of this real image. So that's the that's the whole the whole point kind of of this of this thing to have this series of generators one after the other each one adds their own details at its own scale. And and this works super well apparently. So each generator is just built like this. It takes the no some noise and the image of the lower scale. It adds them. Sorry for these artifacts. Um, it puts it through five convolutional layers and then simply uh, combines it with the input, right? And this will produce this image at this scale. Th that's, that's each layer. It's just five conv layers. And uh, since they're fully convolutional, you can actually change the aspect ratio at inference time. Uh, you can change the, the resolution and so on. It's uh, it it seems it seems pretty neat. Uh, of course, from experience, I can tell you that this probably didn't work at the first uh, try, and there is a lot of work, even though it seems pretty easy. Yeah, you know, keep that in mind. So, for training this, there are actually two different losses. First of all, you have what's called the adversarial loss, and the adversarial loss is your classic GAN loss, right? Where the generator tries to tries to fool the discriminator and the discriminator tries to catch the generator. But then also you have a reconstruction loss. And the reconstruction loss specifically deals at each layer. At each layer, you train the generator to reconstruct the original image when you put in a zero noise except at the lowest layer. But, but essentially, what you want to do is you want to say, well, when, when I don't input any noise, then please reconstruct the original image. And that seems to be important uh, for this for the setup to include this noise so that the, the generative model is basically able to reconstruct the original image uh, as a whole. All right, so these two losses are combined to uh, form the training objective and again this is not trained on a data set it is trained on a single each on a single image and uh, the the productions are, are pretty cool so again here are more samples from just the single training images at the left side and then you have random samples from the single image you can do things like super resolution where this picture has been super resoluted to that picture and I like that they investigate the effects of kind of their setup. So they ask, okay, what happens if we just have a two, basically two different scales of in this in this scaling setup? Then you see the kind of patch statistics will be very very fine grained, and uh, it won't match the any sort of coarse grain structure. If you have very many scales, right? The more scales you have, better. Basically, the more different scales you capture. Um, even more interesting is I find is what if so at this layer where we have G G G right you scale up scale up scale up and so on what you could do is you could not start um, start here but you say okay scrap this layer what we actually do is we take the original image and we scale it down and we input that 
into here instead of inputting the output from the lower layer. So basically you start at, let's say, the ground truth. And um, that effect is, is shown here. If you if, so if you, if you start at the lowest layer in this particular example, you see that uh, the sometimes there are, there are weird things. But what you can do is start at, a, at, let's say, an intermediate layer with the original image, and then the variety you get, because you kind of keep the coarse grain structure the same, the variety you get will only be in the right we said there are different layers and but you now eliminate these two layers and replace them with the original image at this scale so the variety you get will only be from these finer grained lower resolution patches things so for example as you can see here the zebra samples now differ in how exactly their stripes are manifested and this seems this seems pretty cool um, so you have kind of a handle on how fine-grained you want your details or your changes to be. And they do a bunch of more experiments where um, you can do a lot of kind of playful things with this thing. There is code available. For example, here you can see editing, again, as an example, where they compare also with content-aware move, which I think is implemented in Photoshop and uh, paint harmonization, as we saw before. So all of these kind of things are very playful, are very cool, and I encourage you to check out this paper and the code, it seems pretty easy. I have a remark though. Uh, this, this again, it's only learned from a single image and that's the kind of cool part, but it should be possible to combine this with some sort of uh, approach over a a data set like if if I have a model that is really good at a single image right producing something that looks like a single image I should be able to combine it with a model that has been learned from a database um, right it's kind of like a, a Bayesian approach where you say okay I want to produce the best image so I want to maximize the the probability of this image given the other image, right? But then you can also say, aha, but that's that's kind of proportional to j given i times p of i, right? You know Bayes' rule. And it seems that this paper is dealing mostly with kind of maximizing the likelihood of the output while you could probably combine it with some sort of prior over natural images and uh, come up with an even better model. Uh, of course, then you'd need an actual uh, database of images and training procedure, and you need to wait to combine these two models. So maybe that's a bit of a challenge. Anyway, cool paper, uh, check it out, and bye-bye.